Hi all. So a while ago on YouTube, I stumbled down a wormhole of small kitchen appliance reviews. As I was looking to buy an air fryer and perhaps maybe a pressure cooker, that's when I stumbled across one of the worst YouTube chefs of all time. His name is Jack Scalfani, as I like to call him. Jack Salmonella Scalfani. I watch video after video of him butcher, sometimes quite literally, recipes. Imagine driving slowly past a multi-car pileup on the interstate. That's my face as I watched him teach the internet how to make partially cooked meals of varying types and taking awful and unneeded shortcuts to recipes that are already quick to prepare. The absolute horror of Jack's lazy man chefing air quote techniques to my boyfriend Tom and now since we can't unsee it we are opening your eyes to it as well I'm Michelle and I welcome you to join us for this horrific journey better known as Pink Chicken and the Lazy Man welcome back folks to Pink Chicken and the Lazy Man I am Pink Chicken Michelle and I am Tom the Lazy Man Hooray! Superb owl time! It it's is our, superb owl time. It is our most favoritest times of the year. The big game. The big one. The the teams that play the sports with the thing and the ball. To achieve the victory hexagon. Hooray, sports. <laughs> so as part of the superb owl, or the big game, Jack always makes some type of horror show of what he considers to be football finger foods. Uh, there's a, at least four of these out there that we found. We were going to use one of the retro episode recipes, which are all equally horrifying. Some more so than others. We were trying to make sense out of the last one, I think number four, which was basically a bread that was baked with way too much cheese in it. So much so that it coagulated in the bottom of it. And we tried to do a bread bowl dip, but somehow did some kind of has half has Half-assed <laughs> Hasselbecking. All right. Half-assed ha- Hasselbecking. Say that three times fast. Answers on a postcard. Send it in to us. We'll, we'll vote on the winner and you'll get a nice prize. <laughs> Half-assed Hasselbecking by cutting open a bread loaf, shoving strips of pepper jack cheese in it, and not artisanal pepper jack cheese. No, this is just crappy supermarket square American cheese with some red peppers thrown in it. So then he dumped oil on it, which of course the cheese is oily enough. And did he put garlic powder or something on it? He put some kind of dry seasoning. Then he wrapped it in foil, threw it in the oven for not long enough. Yeah, so that's the gist of that one. There were a couple others that we were really confused about. But as the gods would grant us, today on Friday, January 31st, Jack has released a new episode that he's been teasing on his Facebook and I guess Twitter. We don't really know because we're still blocked. That he bought himself a bottle of whiskey and not just any whiskey, not just not just the normal plain everyday whiskey that you would get no it is fireball whiskey but it isn't but it isn't it's the jack daniels version of what fireball is it's jack daniels fire whiskey the higher proof count than Ooh. fireball whiskey hmm. which is going to make things interesting when he puts it in the high cooking temperature that he so desires well first of all before we even go any further the title of this is called super bowl whiskey spelled w-i-s-k-e-y no it's not spelling that's a misspelling uh no h so we're gonna leave out the h's from the rest of this episode i'm just kidding um magic chef air fryer okay let's think about this for a minute high proof alcohol air fryer what may or may not go wrong here we don't really know but we're watching for the oh i know are you going to say that the the rapid movement of the air through the fan, because air fryers work through a combination of two things. Number one, rapid air circular movement in a vortex using a high-speed fan that creates a negative air pressure that flows air from the top of the chamber to the bottom of the chamber and then back around, combined with the other part of an air fryer, which is an exposed heating element. So it's basically a coil just like a full-sized electric oven, just exposed to heat the air as super hot as it possibly can in that small chamber. Into that, you're going to add atomized alcohol particulates. Oh, and he does mention it on his Facebook page or Twitter that he's marinated these wings in this whiskey for 48 hours. Not two hours, 48 hours. They've been marinating in this whiskey for two days. And he's been turning them every hour. And he com- <laughs> he comments at some point during the video. We haven't even wa- started the video yet, but uh, we went through this once already. We, I think twice, actually, because we were just, like, horrified. But um. Well, we thought we missed something because... 
he shows off his ingredients and he's at the beginning of the video he talks about it he's like i have wings and i have whiskey so we were wondering well he cuts out a lot of other stuff in videos now he doesn't show you every ingredient he doesn't show you every step we were wondering what he might have cut out and so we went through it we watched the video a couple times and no no this is what it says on the tin whiskey and wings and because we care about you people we, we honestly do each and every one of you both of you um <laughs> we, we 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 undertook a mission on youtube we, we searched out every iteration we could of whiskey wings whiskey hot wings fireball whiskey wings cinnamon whiskey wings we entered a bunch of terms into it we tried everywhere to find if he got this recipe from somewhere else if somewhere on youtube because again don't forget he does he does lazy man recipes if somebody else had actually concocted this where you could basically just dump a bottle of whiskey in a ziploc bag of wings leave it there for a couple hours and then come back to it air fry it and that would count nowhere 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 does that happen i don't think i've ever had fireball but i understand what it would be like it would be like strong cinnamon gum or eating a red hot maybe like it's it's got the bite probably to it in addition it's to the supposed to be whiskey on the front end so you get the burn of the whiskey on the front end and then you get the cinnamon aftertaste mm. so it's a different kind of burn okay all right he's three or four years late to the party most of the other videos we found were like two years ago where fireball whiskey kind of enjoyed a so a short period of celebrity there for a time it was like a it was like an alcohol meme like oh what are we all drinking like every bachelor party you go to every wedding reception people are like oh we're drinking fireball whiskey and, and i think kind of died out yeah now white claw is the new meme alcohol drink i guess i feel like i'm a boomer but <laughs> um what he en eventually ends up doing here is brining the wings in the alcohol and i don't know if that adds anything to it but i can't imagine eating wings that taste like cinnamon like that doesn't appeal to me at all i like cinnamon in certain instances but i don't think this would appeal to me at all well you see when when babish was making his chili the other day he put a small amount of cinnamon in it when you put cinnamon in a host of other spices it does do some nice floral interplay with some of the other spices but usually it do not use cinnamon just as a spice on to no itself. i think it brings out the flavors and the other spices that you're adding but it's not a magical miracle ingredient if you're going to marinate with it the whole purpose of marinating is a salty yeah, is you, to have a salt content yeah, or an usually, acid content because you're what you're basically doing is you're causing the salt or vinegar aspect of it to draw out the moisture and then the moisture is replaced by whatever other wet ingredient you put in there that's yeah. that's not not happening here with the alcohol i mean at best alcohol is a preservative so it's going to protect the moisture inside the wing so it's not going to there's not going to be any interaction is there sugar content in jack daniels and cinnamon whiskey, absolutely. So what you're saying is these wings are very certainly not keto friendly. No. <laughs> well, they could be keto friendly, but they're definitely not keto. Again, he's not been able to get himself into ketosis. You could see that because he hasn't lost any weight in the two or three months of videos where he said, oh, I'm gotta, I gotta go keto now. Um, he hasn't done any of that. These wings may even knock you out of ketosis, but these are not the, this is not how you ramp up to ketosis. Okay. You wouldn't do something like this. I mean, I guess everybody deserves a cheat day, and Superb Owl Day is as good of any day to, to have a cheat day. But You <laughs> can, but remember, on a, in a keto diet, your cheat day knocks you out of ketosis, and it might take you two or three days to recover to back to ketosis. So that's why keto guys don't usually have cheat days. Or if they do, it's like once a month. It's not like once a week. Hmm. That's good information. I don't know if I could survive keto, because I like my carbs. Well, the, the keto gives you the thing, you get all the meat and cheese and fats that you want. Mm. And you learn very quickly, actually, that one of the one of the benefits of a keto diet is you do feel full more quickly because carbs stimulate hunger, fats satiate it. So when you're deep into a keto diet, you'll do things like eat a tablespoon of cream cheese or just a small taste of butter. And you're like, oh, okay, that's enough. Uh, a lot of times you'll see in a keto diet, they'll call them fat bombs. So it's basically just fat and a little bit of and a little bit of some other flavor and you eat that and you, that's not really supposed to be like that's not supposed to taste that good but it will immediately stop your hunger craving it'll stop any hunger craving because the fat satiates your appetite hmm. lots of science behind keto hmm. has nothing to do with dumping a sugar whiskey over a bunch of a half frozen chicken wings and marinating it probably at an unsafe food temperature for 48 hours and then throwing them in the air fryer you were able to weasel your way out of a manufacturer ah and with that we hit the play button <laughs> yeah it is uh revealed that does he get this as a he gets this as a sponsor 
Or, well, not as a sponsor, but they they send him a but they they send him a, lots of manufacturers send people products to review. Then you have to return it to them, or you have to buy it from them. Ah. So is he buying this? Is he not buying this? Oh, in addition, he'll spend the first couple of minutes after he explains what he's doing here with his two magic ingredients, chicken and whiskey. Doesn't that sound like a, pl a plea for help? I mean, wouldn't you imagine that to be a Saturday Night Live video? Couldn't you see, like, classic Saturday Night Live, like John Belushi just coming on air as, like, a, a Julia Childs-type chef or a galloping gourmet on his last day at the public television station? Like, I don't care anymore. All right, you know what we're going to do? We're going to take some chicken... And I don't know, whiskey. I mean, just, yeah, just dump it all over this thing and throw it in the oven. I don't care anymore. I'm out of here. I've been making food for you freaking Philistines for 20 years now. We're just a, you know, that's whiskey and whiskey and wings is like the, the last day of the of the TV chef who wants to quit. I, I think this video more than any of uh, up to this point for this year have been have been a cry for help. Okay, so we're starting out, and he's marveling that there's only two ingredients. Make sure you like the fl Oh, there's a warning at the bottom. Make sure you like the flavor of the whiskey before you try another alcohol, which is interesting here because he actually has the H in whiskey, which indicates to me that there's poor editing going on, which we're not really shocked about. Well, he rushed it. Yeah, to get this out. So uh, note, the, uh, note the clip art emoji with the megaphone in the corner. Obviously not working hard on original graphics anymore. But again, there's there's something going on here. It's one of the things we noticed about these really, especially the videos of the last, his last 20 videos or so. It's, I don't know if it's just he's hit a point where he doesn't think he can fall or if he is falling and it's just not worth that much to him anymore, like both financially or spiritually, that he's just not caring. There's just not the level of care into these and there's not the joy that there was. I mean, watching his earlier videos, the, the football finger foods videos, he thinks he's hysterical. He's enjoying himself. These last 20 videos or so, he does not seem to be enjoying himself. Like he's just doing it because he has, he knows he has to do it. He's flipping the wings. The now these are store-bought drumlets and flats. Are they frozen? Because they, when he's rolling them back and forth, I notice they sound like heavy, like they have, that they're still partially they're frozen. So, they're still very solid. Yeah. Um, I think they are frozen. That's okay. why he gives them 48 hours. Oh, Which, now it makes sense. Again, you're marinating frozen food. That doesn't make any sense. Because water got it anyway. So this product uh, that he's reviewing is the Magic Chef Air Fryer Oven. It's a 10.5 quart one. And it's it's not one of the basket air fryers. It's kind of like the air fryer oven. Um, I forget what name. Power XL. Power XL. Okay. So it's almost like an oven. It has little slide out drawers. Um, as, he's, as he's tapping on the top of the box here, he's telling you about how he doesn't, he did, Jack did not like the concept of an air fryer to begin with because of portion size. Most of your basket style air fryers are five, five and a half, maybe 6.5 quarts. To Jack, that just wasn't enough. He's, he's making food for too many people. Um, it, it's just not enough food for him. And it's just really him, his wife, and his son at this point in this house. So, like... But what he also doesn't <laughs> realize is, so this is the air fryer oven. It's not a true air fryer because it has little racks in it, as Michelle said, not the basket. So this isn't... This wasn't really... This wasn't really designed like the air fryers. The air fryers were made to basically do french fries. French fries, onion rings, you were meant to air fry. You were, you were meant to air fry breaded ingredients in the air fryer. Now, as people who have air fryers realize, you can do other things with them. They roast meat very well. Yeah, it's great for roasting vegetables. And it's very quick and it's very easy. But yeah. the air fryer oven that he's using here, yes, it is 10 and a half quarts, but you don't get to use all of that space the way you do in a basket style air fryer. So yes, the, the volume, again, 10 and a half quarts refers to the volume of the cavity where the heat is happening at, but that's not, you don't get to use all of that space the way you do in a traditional air fryer. If I may interject here, I was looking at these for a good minute between these type of air fryers and the basket ones, because I watched all the infomercials and I really wanted to know if they worked the way that they did. So that's how I kind of got started he, as the story says with Pink Chicken and the Lazy Man getting into Jack's review cycle here. From all of the other reviews of this product and we watch freaking reviews on YouTube and he does he does a really good job with reviewing products. Well, he does it thoroughly. He, you know, he reviews everything from the unboxing, it's packaging, he reviews every iteration of it, every feature of the product. He's and he, thorough. And he also comes back and reviews it months after the fact to see if it's still doing what it's supposed to do. What he found with the Power XL air fryer, you can't 
can't really overload it like they show it on TV. Right. Because you're blocking the airflow. The airflow. So, and he has, and the way that Jack has this set up here, he has all three shelves in it. And I, I'm guessing maybe two to three wings uh, per side, per drawer. So what are we talking? Like how, a dozen at this? I don't know. I can't math right now. But he has it pretty full. I mean, there there it's is... between 10 and 14 wings. Yeah. There's not much room for air to move around right now. He struggles with figuring out the power once again, you know, back to the, the Keurig and the other Flex Brew coffee maker. He doesn't read the directions. He just plugs it in and wants to go. And wings it. And wings it, yeah. Uh, ha ha. Uh. Oh, and oh, this is the best part. Okay, so we cook the wings at 375 for 25 minutes and then 400 for six minutes. Which means they took it out of 375 and realized it wasn't hot enough. Because, again, overflowed. You can see the problems of the air fryer oven design with what he just has right here. At the 7 minute at the seven minute and 30 second mark, you can see the wings in there. And you can see the problem with the air fryer ovens is the bottom wings were getting burnt and the top wings weren't getting done at all. So there's that airflow issue that freaking reviews had discovered. You can tell right off the bat which ones were on the bottom and the top here. And I don't think the top ones are done because they look a little pink. Pink chicken! Yay! Pink chicken and lazy man. Every time we say it, you must link and share. Every time we say it, you must like, link, and share. Oh, yes. One of the things with the air fryer baskets I noticed is even with french fries or chicken patties or chicken chicky nuggies or anything that's breaded you have to stop it like halfway through and shake the basket yeah. just to redistribute everything yeah. because it doesn't you have to put the hot side you have to put stuff you know it's cooking on one side you flip it to the other side and then you do it so in in, th in that thought you would think that he would transfer the stuff on the bottom to the top and the stuff on the top to the bottom to kind of like you know shake it up essentially even though it's you know the racks but you're you're moving it around you're making sure it cooks evenly like you would with the basket. As you can see at the end of this video, the wing that he has, and I can't tell if it's just the lighting, like he hasn't white balanced again, he's back or front lit, or the camera, the camera has been out of focus, like pretty much the entire video. And it's been, been a little less fuzzy, but it's still not focused properly. But whatever wing he seems to grab when he bites into it, just look at the inside really quick. It's really pink. But again, he's really pink. And I don't think that looks pink to me. I can't tell though if he, if it's just the lighting or he's not white balanced. It looks like it's not cooked all the way through. I could be wrong. I didn't zoom in or anything to check. Well, the bone is very dark. Oh, the bone is dark. Okay. So, so I usually that usually imputes that the bone still has a lot of moisture in it. Ugh. Again, there's not much to it. He's got whiskey and wings. Oh, but did you notice these are frozen store-bought wings. If you remember in the or earlier video we watched with the football finger foods, when he has the wings and their store-bought fresh wings and they're all three parts. Yeah. What I'm talking about is the videos that we watch. We watched a Rachel Ray video. We watched... Oh, the other whiskey wings. Uh, yeah, a couple other random YouTube people. And what they do is they don't brine the wings in... The whiskey. The whiskey. They use the whiskey as a base. In a well, barbecue. In a, yeah. in a barbecue type in sauce. A, yeah, kind of like Jack Daniel's barbecue sauce exactly. that you get at TJ Friday's or whatever in the bottle at the store. They do use the Fireball whiskey. They just use it with ketchup and the, all the other things things that you make barbecue sauce or, or hot wing sauce right. out of. So well, that's, yeah, Jack Daniels, I mean, they sell it now in the stores. But so like the he... The version of it, the, the Jack Daniels sauce. And the only person who did was Rachel Ray. Rachel, but now Rachel Ray made a marinade. She added uh, apple cider vinegar and I remember it was she Worcestershire had, sauce. She had hot sauce, re yeah. a regular bottle of hot sauce and Worcestershire sauce. She and had some garlic, garlic. some seasonings. Yeah. So well, she made didn't... a marinade, but she, and she put a maybe like two or three shots. She, she put maybe about four ounces of Fireball whiskey in with that, but that that was not the marinade. The whiskey wasn't the marinade. That was to flavor the marinade. No, she baked them, she said, to get them crispy. Yep, and then she tossed them tossed them at the end with it. Yeah. He doesn't flavor these at all besides the whiskey. He doesn't even season them. There's no black there's, pepper. There's, there's no nothing. Salt. Yeah, there's nothing. Like he, I know because some people just bake them plain with maybe seasonings, a little oil. And then when they come out, they toss them in the sauce so they don't get soggy. But um, he's not doing any of this. He's just eating them straight from the air fryer, which only you know, brined in whiskey. And we don't, and like, we don't know if they're fully unthawed because they don't seem like they're fully unthawed. I don't know if this video was recorded over several hours. Okay, here are the wings, I'm turning them. And then he comes back later when he thinks they're unthawed and then 
I, I don't know what's going on. It's not very clear. It's not very clear because video production quality is suffering as usual now. When he doesn't have just clear camera and focus issues, he has these editing issues. And it's becoming apparent that there's something going on here. He's not using the same level of care and concern with these videos as he did in earlier videos. He's not having the same kind of good time with it. He's not putting in that little spark of his creativity into it. And he's not showing it as if it's, he's not showing it as if he wants you to do recipes. I'm just wondering what a full bottle of Jack Daniels fire whiskey or whatever it's called costs. Because he basically wasted the entire bottle on this experiment. I, ha I would have to say that it's probably what, $25, $30 at least. At, at a liquor store, we have, we're have we in Pennsylvania, so we're in the uh, dark ages here, and you have to go to a liquor store to buy your alcohol. Typical uh, cinnamon whiskeys, typical whiskeys like that, 11 grams of carbs Oof. in a two-ounce shot. Wow. So more than that, and he's dumping half the bottle in there. Half the bottle? It seemed like he used almost all of it. Yeah, like about two-thirds of the bottle. Two-thirds of the bottle. So his supposition that it might be keto, this is nowhere near keto. Well, my favorite part was when he was flipping the wings back and forth, and he's like, wow, it really smells in here. It really smells in here. Well, no shit, Sherlock. You dump, like, <laughs> like half the bottle of whiskey out. Probably smells like a wine factor, a wino factory in there. Like, come on. I, I don't know. I just... Oh, and then he heats it with the air fryer that's blowing constant air through well, it. Well, so and then I wonder... He's atomized it, and it's basically... You're just... Yeah, I mean, you're basically... It's like having aromatherapy for whiskey. It's like, <sighs> it's like, it's like setting up an aromatherapy fountain for whiskey. God. Or <laughs> essential oil whiskey. Everybody in the house is getting festooned because <laughs> he's atomized alcohol and is spraying it in the air. As you breathe it in, you're, you know, you're, you're, you breathe it in through your nasal passages, through your mouth. Um, you absorb alcohol that way. So yeah, everybody's got, everybody got a little buzz on. Nice. Well, I think that's a good place to end it. Um, we hope you enjoy your Super Bowl weekend. Um, go for your team. We hope they win. Um, yes, and I'm going to go out on a limb here and say the... Insert edit. Team is my favorite. <laughs> I have always been a... Insert edit. Insert team name here. Fan. Oh. I and I was surprised when they won. Especially when they pulled that... Insert play in description here. We'll, we'll, we'll put it in later. <laughs> oh, oh wait, we're we're gonna air this before that. We're gonna publish this before the before the superb owl airs. Yeah. So we'll see you then, folks. <laughs> Take care and see you on the next episode. And thanks for choosing Big Chicken and the Lazy Man. <laughs> <laughs>